Thank you for watching Scary Animal Attacks. If you like this episode, please remember to hit the like button and leave a comment or two. Then subscribe and click on the bell to receive notifications whenever we release new episodes. Welcome back to Scary Animal Attacks. Today's episode takes us to the eastern Pacific Ocean, 750 miles west of the coast of Sierra Leone's capital, Freetown. If the name of Freetown sounds familiar, it was the location of our episode on the chimpanzee attack at the Takagama Chimpanzee Reserve. The ocean in this location varies between 13,000 and 16,000 feet in depth. That's nearly three miles deep. The ocean floor is pimpled with underwater mountains and valleys, and the animal life varies greatly based on the depth. As the sea deepens, the scale of the creatures it can support increases dramatically. The bluefin tuna can be as long as 15 feet and weigh 2,000 pounds in this area. Sunfish here can weigh as much as 4,500 pounds. Sailfish and swordfish are plentiful, and deep-sea giants like blue whales thrive. It's in this beautiful and isolated ocean location that the events for our episode are set. On March 25, 1941, at 8 a.m., the British ship the Britannia was sailing from Liverpool to Bombay, India, when it ran into the German cruiser, the Thor. Now, the Thor was what is called an auxiliary cruiser. It was a merchant ship with hidden armaments designed to attack transport ships the Allies were using to support the war effort. From a distance, it would appear to be a transport ship, but within range, its armaments would be revealed and used to attack. The Thor was wreaking havoc along the coasts of Brazil and Africa, and now it had its sights set on the Britannia. The battle was only an hour and a half in length and ended with the Britannia striking her colors and all 500 souls aboard abandoning ship. The captain of the Thor assumed that a distress signal had been sent out and due to its light armament fired a final salvo to sink the Britannia and fled the area before larger battleships could converge without following the usual protocol of rescuing survivors. There were no Allied ships signaled to rescue the survivors. They were abandoned to drift in their rafts on the open sea. The rescue crafts were overloaded with the surviving sailors so much so that several men floated alongside each raft, hanging onto the side. In the raft occupied by Lieutenant R.E.G. Cox, 12 sailors spilled over the side and filled every space inside the raft. As the day passed and the men waited for rescue, the direness of their situation began to weigh heavy on their minds. The sun set and temperatures cooled. The ocean began to come alive with the noise and actions of unseen creatures. On the second day adrift, the sailors were scorched by the sun and had no supplies for reprieve. The waves danced, but no help came to the men, and they passed the time by rotating positions in the raft or floating to stay cool. On the third day, Sailor Cox took his turn floating. He noticed a large, fleshy mass approaching him. He splashed his hands in the water, trying to frighten this mysterious creature away from him. As he struck the water around him, Cox felt searing pain starting from his hand and radiating up his arm. Next, his leg exploded in burning excruciation. He writhed and yelled as the other sailors pulled him aboard the raft. He rubbed his afflicted hand along his clothes and felt a jelly-like substance smearing over every surface he touched. Then he rubbed his ailing arm over his hair, trying to find a solution from the pain, and in so doing rubbed the jellied toxins of the Portuguese man -o -war over part of his face and mouth. Some of the jelly went into his mouth and slid down his throat before he could stop it. His stomach instantly cramped, with a familiar pain present in his arm. The unrelenting sun torched his exposed skin, compounding the pain and torture afflicted by the toxic jellyfish. On the fourth day, one of the Indian sailors was floating alongside the raft, a large shark attacked him and bit his legs off. He quickly bled to death and drifted away from the raft to be consumed by the sea creatures seemingly stalking the sailors from beneath the waves. The fourth night, one of the sailors was holding onto the tether from the side of the raft that R.E.G. Cox was inside of. As the sailor floated, Sailor Cox witnessed a large tentacle, slightly larger than a man's arm, appear and grope around as if searching for something. As it poked and prodded blindly, it located the floating sailor. The tentacles quickly wrapped around the dehydrated and weakened sailor and began pulling him under. He screamed in terror as he was pulled down, and his shipmates were powerless to stop it. He disappeared into the inky depth of the night seas. The men were stunned and fearful after witnessing such a terrorizing attack, and they jostled in their raft as they looked around to see what creature had executed such a brazen assault. Within just a few minutes, another tentacle appeared and quickly wrapped itself around the leg of Sailor Cox. 
Pain shot through his body as he struggled to free himself, knowing now what would happen if he could not. As the other sailors grabbed him, the tentacle suddenly released its grip on him. The suckers from the tentacle had left circular wounds on his leg, where the serrated teeth of the suckers had made contact with Cox's leg. He was missing skin and tissues about the size of a penny. Over the past few days, the survivors who numbered twelve and now dwindled to three, the sailors cooked beneath the sun and slowly dehydrated so weak they couldn't maintain their own sanity. On the fifth day, a Spanish ship located the adrift raft with the three surviving sailors clinging to life. Lieutenant Cox was in terrible shape and required intensive care and treatment. He eventually recovered as best he could and would describe the events portrayed above to many scientists and historians. Though the events of this account have been disputed by scholars and witnesses alike, the survivors of the sinking of the Britannia experienced extreme hardship and demonstrated the resilience and fortitude of the strongest of hearts. Some critics of Lieutenant Cox's version of the events claim they are impossible, while some are sympathetic to them. Do you think Lieutenant Cox was attacked by a giant squid? Do you think it's possible that he imagined the squid attack due to sunstroke? Could he have been so affected by the toxins of the man war that he had a mental breakdown? Post your thoughts in the comments and let's discuss it together. Special thanks to Jonathan Dyer for granting me permission to use his article to help create this video, and thanks to the Journal of War and History for permitting the use of this information as well. Please visit the links below for further research and confirmation of these events. Thank you for watching Scary Animal Attacks. We value you as a member of our human community, so please be careful out there because you don't want to end up on an episode of Scary Animal Attacks.